You guys ready to make a whole bunch of cards? Hello, Catherine and Thelma and Sharma and Betty. Thelma, I guess I said Thelma. And that's what we got so far. We are going to make a boatload of cards today. And I brought the Teddy cards, but I'm not going to show them yet because we're not all here. So let's start by talking about what we are doing today. Today is day three of quilling class. And what we're going to do today is we're going to use our newfound quilling skills to decorate some cards. But first, we have to make the cards. So I have this week's kit in front of me. Can you link it if we still have any, honey? I have this week's kit in front of me. And in this week's kit, you're going to get a dozen card blanks. Now, I warn you, you probably can make more cards than that from the um, selections that we gave you. But I had to stop somewhere, and I didn't want to get, get too expensive, so I stopped at a dozen. But if you have some extra card blanks handy, we can go ahead and throw the other cards together. We should get 16 or 17 cards. Hi, Elsie. Hi, Glenn. How many of those um, kits do we have left from Cardabella? Four kits left from Cardabella today. So if you want to add the card kit, then we can do that. Um, hi, Betty McSorley. It's going to be fun, fun, fun. So let's take a look at what else we get in the kit. See, it, I will tell you in this one, we had a pearlescent card. We have a six by six and we have 10 European A6 cards in our kit. You get a sheet of chipboard from Cartabella. It's very pretty, matches the designs in the paper and it has some really nice sentiments on it. I must have flowers always and always, the good life. Choose joy, it's the little things. What a wonderful day. Enjoy the moment. So it's got all kinds of really nice, pretty, little easy sentiments on it. And then we have our actual card stock. And one side, we have some solids and some colors. So we've got that beautiful burgundy. We've got pink and cardabella. We've got this really pretty piece of sentiments paper and we'll use these for toppers as well as the chipboard we get another solids red on one side green on the other nice nice layering and accent papers we get this kind of speckled plum kind of color and on the back of that i, I really used a lot of this i use this really pretty little viney paper and then we have this roses and vine circles on one side and we have the soft pinks on the other i'm sorting my cards by what we were making with them and i didn't i didn't remember that those were back to back and then we have this black one that's just gorgeous and it's got um, ferns and little blossoms and little stems of flowers. And on the back, it's light pink. So we've got some nice papers to work with between the solids and the, and the regulars. I think what I'm going to do is start with one pattern and work our way through each one. So let me just sort out. This is the different one. I think I'll start with this one. The sheet. And then get out the ones we're going to use today. Or today. We're going to use all of them today, but right this minute. Okay, and then my a number of these, I, I just, can you go into my hands, please? A number of these, I just left a border and 
and then let my flower be the star of the show. Okay. But they, some of them also have greetings on them. This one has chipboard. These two have items off of our sayings sheet. Hi, Mary G. Okay. So, oh, man, that's, that was a different paper. Okay. I think what I will do first, if you, for once I'm not late. Hi, Kathy girl. <laughs> um, I think what I will do to begin with is go ahead and take out some of my sentiments that I'm using. I think we're actually going to even have extra pieces, believe it or not. Okay. That was one and treasured friend. It's also in the top row, so let's go ahead and cut your top line off of here. I could also go ahead and take this black one from right underneath. Distracted with your big goodie box from SSC. <laughs> Good. All the orders are current. Can you believe it? These girls got four times the ordinary number of orders, and they got them out in the same week. Can you believe that? Wow. They're good. <laughs> They're really good. Now, do check your orders, because even though we pay particular attention to what we're doing, you know, they were pulling a massive number of things. So if you find anything that you that we messed up on that you didn't get or that you got the wrong thing, be sure you let me know so that we can correct that for you quickly. But, <laughs> but my goodness, we had a busy week around here. The biggest single sales day ever, the first day of the sale. <laughs> for very obvious reasons, it's not often that we put our best stock 50 to 90 percent off sale is still going and we i just added 2021 christmas last night so i took out all the sold out items and i added in 2021 christmas and that took us back over i think we're right at a thousand items again <laughs> half of the items had sold out and then I just added a whole bunch more so you still got plenty to look at if you decide you want to look hello Adeline hello Roberta good to see you guys yes that is a humdinger of a sale oh yeah <laughs> yeah Betty I get that the U.S. Postal Service is not as quick as we are <laughs> okay, it looks like, oh, no, we still don't have Mary R. here yet. <laughs> Debbie, stop, I'm struggling here. <laughs> okay. At Oliver's kindergarten party live. Oh, <laughs> and hugs. <laughs> Oh, it's good to see everybody. Okay, let's go ahead and um, start putting a few of these together. If you want to grab that pearlescent card, we'll do that one first. The pearlescent card. You can do these any way you want to, by the way. You don't have to use my methods, but I'll show you what I did. We're going to put that pearlescent one there, and we're going to use this bright, bright pink on the back of it. 
This piece, this is a five by seven card, so it's one of our bigger ones. The piece that goes in the middle is four by six. So I'm going to make this piece, let it cut off here. Let's make it, I think I'm going to make it just a little wider than normal. Well, maybe not. Four and a quarter. Let's go four and a quarter. Line up that nicely. Four and a quarter by six and a quarter. So that this can lay on here. And it can go in here. And I get my glue bottle in my little cup. Now my wet wipe is dried out, so I'm going to give it a nice spritz of water so it'll keep my glue bottle refreshed. Just thought this was the niftiest trick. I showed Margie and she said, how come you and I didn't think of that? I sat on a quilling site. It was a great idea. Okay. I'm going to glue this nice topper down to this bright pink sheet. Roberta says Mary Art is watching on the television. Oh, okay. So she is she on. Is here, yes. Okay, good. Okay. I brought the cards that I've been promising and promising. I didn't want to, I didn't want to um, show those before Mary got here since she has asked three times and I have been remiss in getting them out here. They are so cute though. So I brought them and I didn't want to show them until she got here. So, okay, card number one. Of 12 is done. Now, isn't it pretty? And it says, I hope you have a lovely day. And it's really pretty, but it's kind of like my shirt. It's pretty, it's really pretty. And my shirt's a really pretty tone, but it's just a plain t shirt. It needs something more. So, we're going to doll it up after a while. So, that one's finished. Okay, next, let's get this paper out. I have one, two, three, four, five cards coming from this. Okay, and these are going to be four and a quarter. Four and an eighth, actually. Four and an eighth. I'm going to cut this to six because it's a 12 inch piece of paper. So one of these should fit perfectly on one of my Okay. Well, it's just a tad longer than my And my topper, but and my layering paper, but we never worry about that. I'm going to glue it down or tape it down, whatever your pleasure. Glue it. Oh. I just realized I did this sideways. It's Probably going to be okay because we have other cards, but 
um, you actually want to cut this. This is directional paper, and I just screwed that up, but you're going to want to cut that so that it is the patterns going up and down because most of our cards are going to want to go that way. I can change my patterns. It's no big deal. I'm not going to get all shook up about it, but it is good to know. I have a tiny bit of white showing at the bottom of my card. I'm going to turn that off. Now, I don't have a tiny bit of white showing. Turn the back flap, too. There we go. Card number two. Okay. Yeah. I can just change the design a little bit on that one. Okay. These two I want to layer with some green. This one I want to layer with some. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and cut. Wow. They're very quick cards. Which is good because we want to get to where we are decorating them. I'm going to get that green out. And I'm going to cover two of my cards in this green. I think I'll go ahead and make these four and a quarter just for a little extra wide. Okay, and okay, there we go. Let's color cover this in green, and we'll cut ourselves a couple of strips of our black paper. Now I made. 17 cards, 16 or 17. I keep saying 17, but I'm only finding 16, so maybe that was the number out of this pack of paper. You might get more or less depending on how you cut it. I gave you cardstock for 12, so anything you get over 12 is bonus territory. I have a few extra blanks handy though. You never know how you might be able to use them. Up just a little bit. Super quick cards here today. We just need to whip our cards together so we have some canvases on which to work, right? And then I'm going to take one of my pretty toppers. And that was this one. No, that wasn't this one. This goes with this. This one just needs a strip of the black. And since my card blank is covering, covered in green, I only need this to be three and seven eighths by five and five eighths to be a nice complement to my green paper. This time I cut it right. It's going, <coughs> it's going up and down. Okay. Not girl asks, is it humid there again today? It is, although it's rainy, so it's not as hot, although it is kind of a little warm in here, in my opinion. Bryce will think not, but I'm hot. <laughs> but I'm often hot these days. It's like my heat register is just all off. It's not even like hot flashes, you know. It just, I'm hot and I stay hot. <laughs> I don't know what that's all about. But. loves the paper and even the sound of it being cut. <laughs> well, I'm glad I can make you happy so easily, Catherine. Okay, we got that one done. All right. 
I got another green one to do here with another piece of this. So let's keep all these little scraps till we're done. We never know when we might use something. Okay, I'm going to do another three and seven eighths inch wide slice by five and five eighths. This would be way more efficient use of my paper if I hadn't messed up the first cut. Because you should be able to get. If you're layering, you should be able to get up to six cards. I'm not going to get that many because I messed up my first cut and went the wrong direction. And then that meant in order to switch it, I'm not getting as many cards as I otherwise would. But that's okay because we have lots of paper, lots of choices. <coughs> All right. We don't usually have, I mean, we have high humidity in the respect that rain is falling from the sky, but we don't have a lot of warm temperatures with a high humidity like you guys get on the East Coast. That would drive me crazy. I've had the blessing of being able to go to Washington, D.C. a couple of times with my past jobs. And it was all, I was very impressed by the nation's capital, beautiful buildings, and just the, that just give you a real sense of pride as an American. But <laughs> why they would build such a beautiful city in such a, this is what I thought. If you live in Washington, D.C. or disagree with me, I'm sorry, but such a godforsaken place with such ultra high humidity is <laughs> beyond me. You get in the shower and get out and towel off. And as soon as you're done toweling off, you're wet again from the humidity. Oh, <laughs> Thelma says, naughty kitty loves quilling. <laughs> <laughs> Naughty Kitty, so sweet. I've never met Naughty Kitty, but I love her. <laughs> Thelma's stories make me love her. So I think when we build the Purple People's House, we might have to put it somewhere other than Washington, D.C. We'll have beautiful buildings, too, and people will be able to enjoy them because they're not drippy. <laughs> oh. Wow. Not fun. Okay, let's take our first piece off of our, off of our, you know what, maybe I won't remake this one just as it is, because I haven't decorated that one anyway. So since I'm going to be short a few, I think I will go ahead and just kind of do my own thing here. That'll give me enough to finish. So, ah, let's do that. Oh, I guess I have one over there, though. Okay, let's see. What do we need here now? Oh, got this green one. I think we might, I might substitute. Do I want to do that? Why not? I can, I can do that. And let's put, you are a treasured friend on this one. I am going to put this just a little bit low. Thelma, I'm not leaving it this way. So my, my wide border is at the top. Excuse me. But I'm not leaving it this way long term. Because I'm going to put a design up there that would drive Thelma crazy. But I'm putting the wide border at the top. If you have a wider border, she says, always put it at the bottom. So says the art teacher. But I am going to put it at the bottom 
or excuse me, I'm going to put the wider space at the top so I have more room for my quilling design up there. <clears throat> I'm going to put this and just going to make the margins kind of even with the extra space at the top for my quilling. <laughs> And there's a little chipboard piece in here that I just love. There's a little tiny one somewhere that says friends. Just a little bright, pretty piece. I want that piece. I'll pull my chipboard out. It's time to get going. Okay. So I want this. It's clear up at the top here, this little pink one. Probably be best if it was right side up. Just a little, just a little trick there. And I'm going to start it on my, hmm. even though these are self-adhesive, doesn't hurt to, especially on these tinier pieces, put a little bit of adhesive on it. The bigger ones have enough adhesive overall to I'm going to move that just a bit because that's on top of a pink flower. It looks kind of weird there. So I'm just moving it down just a little bit. <clears throat> I'm going to put my friends off to the side. Well, American Art is going to be tired, so she's asking if you'll show the cards so she can see them. Yes. Okay. We'll do that. Okay. Moving this one. You know, we've already done like five, four or five cards here. We're pretty good. Okay, here we are. Here we are. These are some of the things I've received in the mail recently. Hey, where's my other one? I grabbed a couple of Thelma's butterflies. One of them has flown away. It's probably fallen on my desk here somewhere. But I just wanted to remember and acknowledge Thelma's butterflies Thelma made. Me, just like she made you a beautiful packet of lovely butterflies with wire antennae and bodies. These are going to be great fun to use. And I don't know where my other one went. I grabbed another really pretty one. It's here. It's probably flown away. It's here. This is from Catherine. We're going to get a picture of Teddy. Oh, can you back up a little bit? We're going to get a picture of Teddy and frame it and put this next to it. This was the card from Catherine. Look at this beautiful lattice work. And then she did the little Teddy lettering and put hangers at the top and the bottom. Isn't that just so cute? Love it. Love it, love it. It was to Teddy from Catherine, so we're going to put that on the wall. Okay, here is happy birthday to Teddy from Lacey. There's Lacey. This beautiful card. I love, love, love what you've done with the little pieces of paper. These are little pieces of paper. She's cropped, made a crossover, went up the center corner to corner and right up the center and then said happy birthday teddy here and then matted a picture of kitty that's beautiful and this one says my mom and i are wishing a perfect you a perfect birthday happy birthday teddy and that's from adeline and lacy <clears throat> and this one this is from Mary P, Mary Penko. Look at this, How what a celebration that card is. We got a little teddy dog right here, colored to look just like him. It's so cute. In fact, after saying this, I think I need to run and buy him a blue sweater because that color looks great with his red. Happy birthday, Teddy. I love the little dog collar kind of crossways. I love the purple. That's in for his mom, I'm sure. <laughs> And the little footprint paper in the back. How cute is that? That's adorable. We've got lots of Mary in his card. 
on the inside, it's just as cute as the outside. And it says, Dear Teddy, hope your birthday is full of lots of treats from Mary P., your crafty friend from New York. Make a wish, it says. And the little puppy's blowing out the candle. How cute is that? That's adorable. <laughs> Dad laughed when he opened this one. He thought this was so cute. This one is a chipboard squirrel. Happy birthday, Teddy. That little puppy paper in the back. That little paw print paper. <laughs> How cute is that? <laughs> and this one says, Teddy, I hope you have a positively wonderful birthday from Alice, your crafty friend. <laughs> and here's a poodle. Dad says, I think we should get him groomed like that. <laughs> it's not going to happen. <laughs> Brittany said if I ever did that, she would take him back. <laughs> I do love the glitter. She added the glitter to the poodle, and that's just adorable. <laughs> and it says, ooh la la. <laughs> Happy birthday, joyous anniversary, sweet Teddy. Love, Mary R. <laughs> How cute is that? <laughs> Look at this one. Now this is like a perfect, perfect match. And this is from Mary R too. That is a perfect match for Teddy. Sit, treats. <laughs> How cute is that? And this says, man's best friend, happy birthday. Treats are on the way, love, Mary R. And his treats have arrived, and he's loving them. Fergus has medicine he has to take in the morning and at night now, and Teddy's really enjoying that because when Fergie gets a treat, Teddy gets a treat to get him out of the way so the cat can have his, his medicine. And how is that, though? I mean, that is like a perfect Teddy. Good job, Mary R. That's a perfect Teddy. <laughs> so those are Teddy's birthday cards from this last batch. I've shown you a couple from before. And thank you, guys. <laughs> yes, Teddy's birthday was well acknowledged, and I thank you for that. Okay, let's go back to this. We want this smiles, and this smiles looks oh so much better when we put it on the burgundy. So find a burgundy paper. There it is. Let's put that smiles right onto the burgundy paper, and I'm just gonna glue this down and trim around it. <laughs> So clever you guys are. I'll have to find my other butterfly. I think it, I, there were a bunch of them. A bunch of them in the envelope. Beautiful butterflies that Thelma spent her time working on. And I really appreciate that. That's so sweet. Uh, perhaps. I didn't bring them all out, though, to get the best fit, so I'll incorporate them. I will incorporate one soon. Okay, I'm just going to trim out this topper with this little layering piece on it. It's always fun to see what you guys come up with. You are very clever people. Like I look at some of your cards sometimes and say, why am I leading the class? <laughs> some of you are very, very original and come up with just really fun, fun designs. I like that burgundy and the, what it does for this card. Okay, I'm going to put this on. Okay, 
We're just about halfway through, I think. Can you believe these go together so fast? It's really easy to make cards from this kit. They just need a little something more. Just a little something more, like quilling. Quilling images help them a lot. Okay, this one's going to have just a little bit of white showing, so we will dispose of that with our trimmer. Catherine says, no one could do a class like you. Oh. She waits all week for it. You're too kind, my friend. <laughs> too, too kind. Okay. So I'm going to trim just a little off the back of this one because that's what's actually showing. Okay, perfect. We've got smiles. My heart smiles just thinking of you. Now, last time I put on a piece of chipboard, and I actually think this card is pretty good as is, but if we drop this down just a little bit, that would give us room to actually do a, hmm, except this is the wrong direction. Um, and I've already done it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do it. I'm just going to leave it that way. I'm going to go ahead and make this just like the last one. Because this is that piece of paper that I cut the wrong direction. And see my, my floral's going one direction and my topper's going the other. I didn't notice what I was grabbing there. So I think I'll just put this here. And we may put some little swirls or something on it, but I'm going to pretty much leave that one as it is, I think. Okay, let's see. I do have one more, though. <clears throat> this is another one that I've covered in green. Let me see if I have enough green left. Get that one more out of the green background. I don't think so. But I do have an extra wide piece of um, piece of paper to go on top. So I'm just going to go ahead and make this one without the layering paper. That could be really cute, Sharma, with the quilled butterflies and the quill or the the um, wired butterflies and the quilling. That might be what to do. In fact, that would be a really good idea for what to do with this card I just had here. But I didn't bring the whole collection out. I should have. It didn't even dawn on me that I would want the whole collection for today. Huh? Yes, that would be awesome. Where are they located? On the table. Well, more towards your side of the table. Okay, I think this is this might be the only one that we had to worry about directionality on the card. I think this was the only one. And I used this big topper from the bottom. Happiness blooms from within. I'll leave myself some room up at the top there to make something beautiful. Okay. All right. So that finishes that stack. Let's see what else we have here. Okay. 
get the next stack out. And well, there was another green there. <laughs> now I find it. That will layer something else. I'll put that green or the red on the back. Okay. This big stack of cards here. I believe like this all comes. Well, it doesn't. Well, let's do these here. We have all these pretty, pretty cards here that are coming from this paper. So let's just cover these now. Thank you. I'm going to cut the, are these directional? They're maybe just a bit directional. So I'm going to cut a, I have two that are layered on the cards. And for that, I only need three and seven eighths. So I'm going to cut a three and seven eighths inch. <laughs> Good, 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 Glenn. I'm glad you got that. That um, 2021 kit. Good for you. Okay. That's a good price, isn't it? Okay. So we got, I'm going to do one strip that's three and seven eighths. This is a little bit directional, this paper. I think I would cut it with the band on the bottom. I'm fuzzy on the screen. Is it fuzzy? <clears throat> Bryce is going to straighten me up here. Sometimes when I have um, really uh, busy prints, the camera has a hard time staying focused on them. Okay. All right. Thank you. That looks better. Okay. <clears throat> For this first card, I am going to put down this one. I'm not sure if you can see it. But I actually have a white border around it, and it looks great. So I'm going to do that again. You know what else would be really pretty with that, though? It would be this red one where I didn't use it before. Let's do that. Look what would happen. Oh, I just messed it up again. This print, I think, is what's messing up the camera. I'm going to put this red behind it. Is your screen clear? Or is it just mine that's wanky, guys? It's pretty clear up there. Okay, it looks clear now. I'm going to put this bright red behind this one that was just white before. This is quite pretty. It'll be really pretty with the quilling I did on the other one. Just a little short, but that's not a problem. I have a trimmer. <laughs> okay, we're nice and clear, Laura says. Cool. Okay. All right. Now it doesn't have white on the top. <laughs> No one said it. No, I thought maybe that was my butterfly. I was seeing it's just a little, you know, you got a really good trimmer when you have a slide stuff like that. <laughs> That's a good trimmer. Okay, let's see. I want this to be five. Well, I probably not in five and five eighths anymore. I'm going to cut this to probably, five. I'm going to start at five and a half. I might have to cut it a little more. Yeah, it needs to be just a little more off so that I do have a little strip for cutting off here. Okay, just a little more off so that my borders are even all the way around. 
Okay, that looks good. Now look what that's gonna look like with this on it. Won't that be pretty? I love that. This is just such a quick way to get a really fun set of cards to work with to do our quilling on. Now, I did, on one of these, I did use, I'm going to use this little piece I had left. Oh, no, that's not going to work. That doesn't look good at all. I thought it was going to layer this on there. But I think maybe I'll just leave this alone this time and just put it on like this. Because this does not look good at all. <laughs> and this one... Maybe I'll just set this one aside and see if I have a layering paper piece left over that would look good there. But I do think it looks pretty anyway. And I, I'll go ahead and go with it. Okay. Let's just go ahead and put that on there. I'm dropping it down just a little bit extra to leave room for my flowers at the top. Thanks for being you. Okay, let's see what else we've got here. We've got this one, which will be great. Okay, so I've got this and I need a background piece. And it appears I used a piece off the back. So let's do that. I'm just going to go ahead and cut this next strip to four and a quarter. Yeah, that's going to look good. Okay. I'm going to take one of my A4 cards. I'm going to. Do you guys all make up a few extra flowers this week? Who did your quilling assignment? I did mine, but I didn't do enough of them for all my cards. I have to admit that. But I did make up. Oh, here we go. Oh, Grace just brought these. More of Thelma's butterflies. Hey, Susie, good to see you. Welcome, friend. Okay, this time. Right now, we're making some very simple cards, Susie. What we're doing is we are making up some really simple cards from a paper assortment from Cartabella. And then what we're going to do is we're using the cards and the chipboard and the um, the cardstock topper sheet <coughs> to make our cards. And then we're going to add quilled flowers to them to make them really pop. But you can only add the quilling after we've constructed the basic cards. So we're taking... A few minutes here today to make some card blanks. I'm going to cut this to five and five eighths because I know that my card blank that's covered is five and seven eighths. That's a nice match, so I'm going to go ahead and go with that. I don't know about you, but I started running out of quilling paper in certain colors. So I'm glad I have quilling paper that should be showing up this week. Because we're going to need some.
I'm on the way to investigating a couple of different quilling companies that I may get some stuff from. Um, okay, this time I'm choosing the Good Life chipboard piece. I'm going to put that right in the middle. And I love the way that the um, that this piece here turned out by wrapping, by taking this stem flower that looks a lot like some of the stem flowers on the sheet and just kind of wrapping it up around the corner and creating our own little little floral component there. I like the way that turned out. Hi, Diane. Hi, Diane. Welcome, friend. Whew. Warm. Okay. Let's see. I'm going to cover this in this extra piece I have here. Is anybody working along today? I know a bunch of you got this Cardabella kit. You're just watching to see what I do with it and then going to come back later and do it or anybody working along today? If you are working along, I kind of feel sorry for you because I didn't ask that question earlier and I've been racehorsing through getting the cards completed so we can get to the other part. Okay. Are you new to our video, Susie, or do you watch? And this is your intro and chat. Okay, I'm going to get a piece of this burgundy because while this is a perfect match, it just disappears into the card. So it really needs a, really needs a mat under it. Okay, cool. All right. What's Glenn doing? He has an awesome idea. I, I can believe this. There's a quilter. I might do, can she use this old paper shredder? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I've seen people do that. The old style paper shredders that didn't cross cut work perfectly to create quilling strips. That is a good thing to point out, Glenn. You don't want the ones that cross cut because it's not going to leave you anything to, to wind up. The ones that come off in long shreds, that is perfect. Yeah, we have one with a nice border and look how much better that looks than the plain topper on there. I just love our butterfly on this one. Or not a butterfly, our dragonfly on our quilled sample. Just love it. Did Irene just come in? Hi, Irene. Lots and lots of nice people in this group, Susie. Some of the nicest people ever. Um, the narrower strips are on the way. They should, they're in with, uh, I have a few quarter inch strips and it's actually mostly eighth inch strips that are coming, so. 
I put this one a little lower to leave a little more room for our dragonfly. Have you and I talked on the phone before, Susie? Your name sounds kind of familiar, but it's been a while, right? Or maybe we haven't talked on the phone. I don't know. Okay. All right. Let's see. Let's, let's get our next one out here. I really like this piece of paper right here. I think this is so cute. These swirls and circles. Really cute. And I need a piece of bright pink. I use all the bright pink. I'm doing this a little differently than I did before, so no telling. <laughs> what I'm going to get. What matters what size strips you use? Um, you're going to get, I haven't given up Diet Coke, but I've been drinking a whole lot more water, part of my Weight Watchers thing. And so I'm using Mio this time. I love strawberry watermelon Mio. Just in case the meal people are, are watching, you know, um, I'll, I'll be happy to entertain that truck pulling up into my driveway to leave me a case of meal. Just, no but no fruit punch. No fruit punch. Don't like fruit punch. Uh-uh. Nope, that's not my favorite. Strawberry watermelon's my favorite. <laughs> Someday they might actually do that, then it would just be so funny. <laughs> Not to say that wouldn't be appreciative. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I think we're going to need a couple million more followers before that will work. Okay, Debbie, it's called what? I'm not sure what she's talking about. Do you know what she's referring to? Nope. Me neither. Okay. Well, I had a border around this one. And I don't have big enough pieces for that. So I have two choices for what I can do. I do have a nice size piece of adorable squirrel, but it's just... Not going to be quite big enough. Oh, that actually looks kind of neat. Oh, that would be just... I think I have to do it, guys. I'm not sure what you're talking about, Roberta. Is this a brand product? Uh, adorable score would, would only be from Hunky Dory. So you're talking about a new Hunky Dory product? Because Velvet Lux, I don't think I've seen anything called that. Yeah, it may be something new that just hasn't, okay. It might just be something that hasn't been available to me yet. Look what I'm gonna do. <laughs> this piece of red that I have left is too short to cover my card, but I actually think this would look really fun to use that green strip at the bottom that they put on just to show me what's on the back. I don't know how I'm going to use this, but I have to try it. I have to do this. It just must be done. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use that strip. Don't know how it's going to work out. Don't know what I'm going to put there. But I have to do it. So I'm going to position this so that the green strip is all the way on my card. I'm going to have to trim off a little edge here, but that's not going to matter. <coughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> 
had to do it, guys. I just had to. Okay. All right. Now. I'm going to hold that one back a little bit. And let's see what else we have here. <clears throat> okay. I want one that's just right on. This one doesn't appear to be directional. I think I can go any direction I want with this one. That's kind of pretty, too. I'm going to do it again right here. I like this little pink strip at the bottom of this one, too. <laughs> you guys don't care that I... <laughs> you guys don't care that I changed my designs on the fly, right? <laughs> Sometimes I just see things that appeal to me and I have to try them. Yeah. That's just pretty. See that? That's just a little strip to show us what color the other side is. Now, what do I want to put on here? I have a few choices. This would be a great place for that green that's on this one. There's that chipboard. I have this little narrow saying, and I think to myself, what a wonderful world. I think it has to go down there this time. Which will make this card quite a bit different than the original, but that's okay, isn't it? And I think to myself, it's, it's, you start hearing that song in your head, don't you? Okay, that's going to be, that's going to represent that one this time. <laughs> okay, I've got right here that's backed in pink, and that looks beautiful. So I think I have to do that this time. Will you get me? Oops. Hmm. I'm going to need a handful of A6 cards out of the drawer over there, please. I think I have to switch gears here. I'm going to cover my big card because it's what I have left on my table. You know, you know, those are five by seven. Oh, I just found some. Now they let you put the work down. Okay. All right. And sometimes you just got to try stuff, right, guys? You just have to do it. Okay. I am going to decorate the six by six. The six by six is the one I'm using like this. Okay. And... I'm going to make the train of card goes. I'm going to put that six by six right on here. Oh, maybe Lauren can go get him. Yeah. Teddy's getting a new do today. Well, they haven't had him that long, so. They must have been ready to just get right in and get her done today. 
He looks so cute when his coat's overgrown and he gets so fluffy and curly. But it gets to a point where it just gets too hot. And with warmer weather on the way, we decided we didn't want to wait. We better get him in it. Get that coat shaved off. So he's getting a new do today. Greg said he didn't behave very well with the groomer. Said he wanted to go socialize with every dog he saw. And our groomer's inside Pet Smart. So there's lots of dogs in the store. And he was not a well behaved puppy. He's been so starved for dog attention, though, during this pandemic. He hasn't got to play with any dogs. He sees them all. He says, Let me go. Let me go. I must play. It's in my DNA. I must do it. This time I'm going to take the chipboard that is You Are Beautiful and put it at the bottom. And then that matches the little flowers in our paper. And it matches, yeah, this pretty little bouquet right at the bottom. So I'm going to put it right above there. Maybe not like that. There we go. Kind of centered above that. And then I'll put my quilling all across the top. That might be one of the first cards we do today. I really love that one. Okay. I've got a couple more here. Uh, I think we should cover two more right here. Let's see what we have for width. Oh, perfect width. Okay. I'm going to turn the strip off the top so I can see what I'm doing. This first strip I'm going to cut to three and seven eighths inch by five and five eighths. Hello. Say hi to Lauren. She came in to take it over for Bryce while he's picking up the puppy. I actually didn't need it that long, did I? I'm going to take another half inch off of this. Maybe Bryce will bring Teddy so we can see his new do. That will be good. Okay. Ooh, that's going to be pretty. Okay. Catherine from France says, hi, Lauren. Lauren has visited your beautiful country a couple times now. Catherine and totally loves it. Next time you go to Europe, are you going to France again? She says next time she goes to Europe, she'll go to France again. I think the French pastries are enough to get me there. <laughs> right, Lauren? She comes home and tells me all about them. Of course, I didn't get a care box from France. But I'm going to put what a wonderful day down here on the bottom of this one.
and I'm going to cover another one. This time with this paper. I'm actually getting to a point where I don't have an awful lot of paper left on my desk. So it's a good thing because then we can move on to other things we're wanting to do. <clears throat> but I did want to make up this batch of cards. We're now more than 12 because I'm using extra card blanks. And there were 12 in my kit. So you should easily, easily be able to get Fourteen, sixteen, seventeen cards out of your kit. I'm covering in bright pink. This pink, soft pink topper. Layering paper. And now I'm going to add some of this paper. Looks like I'm going to run out of paper of this kind soon. What can I do here? Oh, this will get me closer. Let's do this. Okay, let's make this three and seven eighths inch wide, five and five eighths inch long. Oh, I think I'm still going to get one more out of that thing. Beautiful. Beautiful. A little rough edge on that one, gotta take care of. Just a tiny little rough edge. There we go. Okay, here we go. I must have flowers always and always is our topper for this one. Okay, I have one piece of this left. I think it's going to be perfect to make a card. Yes. I really do love this one with the green squirrels. This may not be the most stimulating thing you've ever watched make, watching me put these together, but when you have your own kit in hand and if you're trying to make them look somewhat like the samples you will probably enjoy replaying this if that's what you decide to do so we got to start by putting the cards together no matter what we do so i apologize but then i don't you know <laughs> I thought about this, but just couldn't think of any way to really get around it. Okay. We have this piece. We have my sayings sheet. My saying sheet has stop and smell the roses on it. I'm going to come in here and get this one. Okay. 
And what I did with this one is that because I like my card horizontal better than vertical, I actually trimmed these edges down a bit. So I'm going to take about a half inch off the top and bottom so that I end up with something that is three by three. Then I'm going to take this one and I'm going to come up here to where I have this scrap and I'm going to layer this. Oh, Catherine wants to know, Lauren, did you see the Eiffel Tower at night? Oh, you have to tell her where you stayed. I did. We stayed at the... Talk loud enough, they'll hear you because the mic's my direction. A hotel that was like half a block from the Eiffel Tower the first time we went. She went with her Aunt Paula, and Aunt Paula spared no expense and stayed in a hotel that was half a block from the Eiffel Tower, a perfect view out the front windows. It's wonderful to have an Aunt Paula. I've often asked Aunt Paula if she's going to adopt me. She laughs. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> but my children are blessed to have an Aunt Paula. Aunt Paula asked Jordan where she wanted to go for a graduation present, and Jordan didn't really understand the vastness of her choices. So she said New York City. And they went to New York City and saw plays and stayed in Times Square. And, you know, it was a beautiful trip. Don't get me wrong. But when she asked Lauren, Lauren said, I'm going to go to Paris. And then Paula said, OK. And Jordan said, oh, because <laughs> I didn't realize that was a choice. <laughs> well, I've heard Aunt Paula say that someday she's going to take Jordan to Paris. <laughs> Oh, I think she would she would budge for Paris. <laughs> okay, we're coming down to the end here, guys. We don't have an awful lot of paper left. I have to have this blessed to call you my friend, though. We have to have that. Where is that? Coffee? Where is it? Oh, it's on the other side. How am I going to do that? I suppose I can cut it here. Yeah, I can. Okay, I'm going to cut this off. I really want this blessed to call you my friend because it's beautiful. Well, we'll just make the card to fit, huh? That's what we'll do. When all else fails, just make the card fit what you want it to do. Yeah, I like this. So, that looks narrower up there for some reason. Did I not cut straight? Maybe not. Okay. Oh, it has a little advertising at the bottom of it. Let's just cut that right off. And we'll put this on here. Okay. Okay. Roberta has outdone herself with those dragonfly cards, hasn't she? Oh my gosh. 
So, so pretty. Okay, let's put this green one on a card. I wonder how many cards we've gotten. I don't know. We're down to just not many pieces left. Okay, I'm going to turn this on the side. Oh, look at that. That is very close to fitting. I'll trim just a little off the edge. And, ooh. <laughs> Okay. It's really hard because he put this beautiful fern paper on the back of the same sheet, but I chose to save most of the sayings and let the fern paper go because the sayings were so pretty. Now we no longer have a white strip. And I can use my bliss to call you my friend. Which I think we'll put right about there. Well, these are really simple, easy cards, Susie. I can't wait to begin to show you what we're going to do with these with our quilled flowers because they are it's just going to step them up you know step them up a notch okay from the push out sheet i'm going to use the little daisy <laughs> thank you diane you're too sweet okay i'm going to use the little daisy there and of course, we're reserving some room at the top for our quilling. Okay, let's see what we've got left. I've got pink, bright pink, light pink, a little bit of this left. Let's see what we're going to do. Um... Let's cover our card in the dark. Let's do that. the card in the dark paper. I'm getting a totally, well not totally different, but a very different assortment this time than I did last time, but that's okay. It's kind of fun to see what we end up with when we just go for it. Okay, I'm going to put this piece on there. This will be cut to five and five eighths to fit this card. That's going to be beautiful.
This oh Mary R left, didn't she? She was tired today. I was gonna ask how her brother was doing and how her hubby was doing. I worry about her where she's caregiving for two. It's a big job to caregive for one. Two is a very large job. Okay. I think we will use like this. Or do I like this? I think I like the green a little better. I'm going to cut myself. This is just a little leftover scrap. I'm going to cut myself a three by three out of that green. I'm going to turn it on the edge. Maybe I'll have to cut it a little bit more. This is, let's go to two and three quarters by two and three quarters. It was just a little bit wide that way. I can do this. I'm going to glue this down side to side. I'm going to get this pretty smell the roses topper and put it on here. I'll add some glue to the back here. And that's going to be pretty to add some quilling to. And I have just enough probably for one more piece. I have dark. I have pink. I have green. I have a few little toppers left here. I have some sayings here. So I think we need to create something out of it. Oh, boy, these are, it's hard to choose. I think this black could be beautiful with the pink and the burgundy. But this saying right here, wishing you all the beautiful blessings that life has to offer I'm kind of thinking that needs to be used, but I need to see. Um, Lauren, I need another A6 card, maybe. maybe. I could just cut one. Never mind. I'll just cut one. It seems sinful to cut down a 5 by 7 but in the interest of time, I'm going to do that. I know I don't have enough paper to cover this otherwise. I'm cutting this to the size of an A6. Here for an eighth, which is four and an eighth. My five and seven eighths. Okay, I need to make sure this is going to fit side to side. And it's six inches. I can trim a little off each end, and I think it will fit. Okay, let's cover this. And do we want to cover it in pink and layer it in dark? Or layer it in dark and cover and I think we'll go with the dark on the outside, the light on the inside. That layer of flowers are most likely to show. Okay. I'm gonna have to get two pieces out of this one remaining piece of cardstock. <coughs> Hi Brenda. Well, we're not done yet. We've just been covering cards up to this point. We're, we got about an hour where we can do some decorating then. So we're not done. You didn't miss us. We've just been covering cards the whole first part of the class today. Because we have to build the cards before we can decorate them. And we've done pretty good because we've gotten, I'm guessing, I have to count them, but I th I'm guessing we have 16 cards, maybe, in an hour and a half. So that's pretty good, really. 
And moms are important. That is absolutely true. <clears throat> Did you catch that, Lauren? Moms are important. <laughs> She's looking at me like, yeah, and your point is? <laughs> okay. And I have just enough to make a layer here. This is kind of pretty. I'm so easily distracted. I go to put it down and I think, oh, that's pretty. What's, what's going on with that? Nah, I don't think I want that for this one though. Okay, I'm going to cut my layer to three and seven eighths <coughs> by five and five eighths. That's going to be pretty. I'm thinking about putting one of these on again. I cut it to two and three quarters by two and three quarters. So it'll fit my card. <coughs> Wait, do you guys see what we have left out of our card kit? I've thrown one inch scraps away. That's actually really pretty there too. It's very tempting. I'm gonna try them both and then we'll see which one we actually use. I love the greedy on the other one though. <coughs> and I'm just cutting this off the scrap paper just because. I don't want to throw it away on accident. Okay. This one's cute too. Congratulations to my sweet friend. This one's just flat beautiful. The colors in it are gorgeous. That would be very, very pretty. Very pretty indeed. So that's one choice right there, guys. <clears throat> of course, I trim it up properly, but this is one choice. And we can put we can put flowers in the middle or we can just quill the flowers into the center of it. I'm kind of thinking that might be really fun to just put quilled flowers in the middle. But hi, Sandy. Good to see you, friend. So there's one choice, okay? That's one choice we have. Good night, Catherine. Tune in and see what we do with some of these cards, okay, friend? Okay. This would be the other choice with flowers in the center. I don't know whether we'll use, maybe we can picture it better if I stick this on so you can see it. And if we put this here, this is that beautiful saying, but this is our second choice. Which design do you like better, the dark strip or the green strip? I need votes. Number one is this one. I didn't mention it to you, but it's actually really convenient that these um, these chipboard pieces are repositionable initially, then they become less so. They stick 
There's the dark. Here's the lighter strip. I can lighten that up a little bit on the lighter strip. Up here, because I cover up a little bit of the green, <laughs> dark, dark, number one. Okay, we're so far the darkest winning. If you want the green to win, you got to chime in. This is the green. I do love the saying, that's the one thing. This is made out of all the scraps I have left. <laughs> dark, dark. It looks like dark one. We're going with dark. Okay. What do you think? Should we use the chipboard piece or should we just quill flowers into the middle? I know I'm needy today. I want lots of opinions. <clears throat> a large quilled flower in the center would look nice. So I got one vote for the quilling instead of the chipboard. Put my layering piece on. Where my dark strip oh, there it is. I want this to be five and five eighths inches long. I have a little rough spot in my layering there. I don't like that. I don't know if I can take it off. Quill center. Okay. <clears throat> All right. That back on. I had a little rough spot in the side of it. I need more glue. Probably will. I do. Quilling in the center. Okay, let's do it. And this will be the first one we put the quilling on. How's that? Because we're out of cardstock. I'll show you what we have left from our total kit. Okay, I'm going to cut this to five and five eighths. And it's got a pattern on it, so I'm going to trim a little bit from each end so that the pattern will be somewhat even. Put that across the middle. <coughs> I do agree that's beautiful. Let's put this square in here to feature our quilling. It's kind of a diamond the way we're putting it, but you know what I mean. Okay, let me show you what we got left. Okay. What we have left out of our entire sheets of cardstock is this. <laughs> I don't think there's enough left there to do anything. <clears throat> We do have a couple pretty greetings left. We'll have to say congratulations to you, my sweet friend, with deepest sympathy and wishing you all the beautiful blessings that life has to offer. Otherwise, <laughs> that's what's left of our cardstock. We have used it up. <clears throat> and this is what we have left out of our chipboard. 
a few little pieces we may garnish here and there with. We have some cute little accent pieces here and there that if we need a little something while we're working on our cards, we'll add those. Let's see what we got out of this. I think these two were original. No, they weren't. This was the one we just did. So I got to count that. <clears throat> This was the one we just did. I promised we'd do that first. This. 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 Now I do have one that didn't get quilling work on it yet. This. this oh, but teddy's here teddy's here okay give me one second honey i'm doing a little project here nope no sliding and we wanted to find out how many cards we got um, that one just hit the floor. Okay, let's see how many we got today. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. We got seventeen cards out of those sheets of cardstock today. And we have all of those beautiful things to do work on. But work has to wait until after we have Teddy Cam. Mary's going to be upset she missed it. Hello, dear mister. Hello, Mr. Ted. Hi. You look so much smaller. Can you sit, please? Teddy, Teddy, hey, good boy. And can you lay down? Come here, come here. Come here. Lay down. Hey. Hey. Pay attention to me. Here. Sit. Sit. Now lay down. Lay down. Hey. Not scratching. Laying down. Lay down. Teddy. Are you mad at me and you're just not listening? Come on. Sit. Now, now lay down. Teddy. Lay down. Come on down. Good boy. Good boy. There we go. Yes. You're a good boy. So handsome. So handsome. <laughs> Elsie says, oh, Teddy time bed must wait. There he is. Talk to him over there, guys, so he'll look at the camera. Uh, he took the chance to put the camera up, please. And you guys got to pay attention if you're your camera people. What camera do you want up? Because this whole head's in it. There we go. There we go. Okay. No. All right. This is a good boy. Thank you. All right. You want to go see Dad? You want to go see Daddy? Okay. Come get him, Lauren. Okay. Lauren, I'm going to take you in the house. He looks so pretty, buddy. He looks so pretty. Can I go see Grandpa? Let's go see Grandpa. Go wake him up. Have him play with you. Whew. Okay. We have lots and lots of cards, so let's switch gears here. And let's put some pretty quilling stuff on some of these. I promise this one will be first. And let's just get a few of these out here. And see what we can do i made some flowers your flowers will most likely be different than mine that's okay i just made up what was handy and i used up a few of those um die cut flowers while i was at it so my flowers may be different than yours although you do have those in your kit if you wanted to use them let's go to this one and as we were talking about it, I was picturing 
this one in here. That might not be my best choice, but that's the one I was thinking of. I also have these with the pearls, which could be pretty. Okay. I have some actual fun coils we could use if we decided to. Let's see who hot. Okay, we also have this one almost deserves a featured place. This is that double flower we made in class the other day. Come in closer on this one so people can see this. <laughs> Thank you, Elsie. I think he's the cutest dog on earth, but then I am a little swayed in that one. Come on, there we go. This is the double petal we made. And you'll remember we made this by making a, a half strip coil. And then we, um, instead of making a marquee out of it, we left the bottom flat, or we, we flattened the bottom and brought the two um, sloping sides down, and then we glued those together. So this took 10 half sheets to do that. Yeah, his, his legs always look longer after he's been trimmed. <laughs> so this one really could use a featured place. They have lots of choices. Okay, we just got to get on with it and choose something. So I do have a strip already made. I think this one would look good because it needs to be darker against the olive paper. So I think that would look nice. Yeah, I think that looks pretty. Let's see what else we have here. I have some little dark leaves. Made up. This is my little box of stuff. <laughs> okay. trade out and see what this one looks like there. I think this other slightly larger flower, whoops, a slightly larger flower might look better there. I think we're just going to put a single balloon. Might need to, I think we're going to need to make another vine. So let's get busy and make another vine. Okay, so get my box out here. My green strips. I need my quilling tool. There's my cooler. And let's make a couple vines. Okay, there we go. Let's get a couple of these dark ones out. Oh, they're all hooked together. <laughs> yeah, let's get a whole bunch of dark ones out. Um, can you back up a little bit now, please? Oh, good. That looks nice. Okay, let's get in here. Um, I think I'll go ahead and take these in half because I would virtually never use a whole piece for vines because I add on and add on, you know. Good night, Elsie. Thanks for stopping by, friend. Okay, I'm going to wind this up a little bit. I'm going to let it go. Just want a nice little 
curl at the end. And then a lot of times I'll take my fingers and kind of bend those a little bit, just kind of put a little manual curl in it of sorts to get me going. Now I'm going to add another piece to that. And this time I'll go the opposite direction. You also, when you're making these curls for the vines, um, you don't need to wind them real tight. Now some paper, this is almost a cardstock, this green, some paper just really takes the curl fast. And then you may have to just kind of unwind it a little bit with your fingers to get it to kind of go where you want it to go. So I think we'll go ahead and attach this to the back of that one. And I'll just glue those two vines together. <laughs> I've been a willing bee. A quilling bee. Oh, a quilling bee. I've been a quilling bee. <laughs> okay. And... I'm going to wind another strip on here. I'll get a little piece going there. I'm going to glue this to the back side. So you can see what I'm doing, guys. I'm just going back and forth a little bit. Just going back and forth. Just kind of making little curlies and binds. I think it's time to add a leaf. So let's add a leaf here. Because that would look good. And put a little glue down the side. And just slide this right on into my vine. Now, up here, I can put either a leaf, which that actually looks really good, or let me see if I have a bud in the right color. I do. I could create a little bud and put up there. If I want to. That might look really cute. Let's put, let's try putting this in down here. Maybe add another leaf here, or maybe slightly higher. I think I preferred the leaf up there. Okay, so let's glue this leaf in there. Oh, ah, we all do it on chat, Roberta. It's a good thing I get to talk instead of write, because you guys would see how crazy I my verbiage would be. Another little leaf here. a couple leaves in on this side and try that bloom again and see what we think. We might just decide we want just that one flower. But I do like the leaf there. Can you, oh, oh my page is a little fuzzy. 
Is it fuzzy on your side or just mine? Oh, that looks good. I think sometimes when I'm doing small things and we have small prints and stuff, it's just trying constantly to trying constantly to focus and I'll use up all my little. Okay. Oh, I've used up all my dark green leaves. So, oh, there's another one. You can see I'm using little teardrop leaves in this. Oh, now you're on me. Do they have a screen still? Okay. I like this design. I think it's time to glue it, guys, because I'm liking this design quite a bit. Move that one over there. This one over here, maybe. I think it's time to glue it. Thelma says, Quilling is taking this card from zero to 100. <laughs> Thank you, Thelma. That's what this whole lesson today is about, is making cards that are pretty but they aren't just need something and then we add that something and all of a sudden we've got something exceptional you know i'm fuzzy again on my side my picks sometimes will get fuzzy sorry guys i think part of this is what i'm doing here Okay, you know what else I'm going to need here is what kind of a greeting would be good. I'm going to grab my sticker file. Okay, you, you must be clear again now, Diane, huh? I'm sure I'm glad they put this sheet in for me to use again. <laughs> we picked up my stickers. We put, I think, completely empty sticker sheet back in the file. <laughs> I don't know about the holographic, but I think I'm going to go with it because the lettering is the size I want. You know what, one thing might be good here with this holographic lettering. Oops, it ripped off my Y, but I'll put it back. <laughs> I'll put it back on. Everybody should have a pretty clear view right now, I think. Okay, I need a piece of rainbow mirror here. I can't see what colors I'm grabbing with this file situated where it is now. Can you get me a piece of rainbow mirror out of the drawer, please? Or unless you can flip through here and find it. There should be some in here. I just can't. Oh, I found one. Oh, I already glued that down. <laughs> I can't do that. I was going to put a little bit of Rainbow Mary under that green, but I can't. Because it's already glued down. But that's okay. I'm going to glue this whole thing down now because I think it's truly beautiful. Now, I have seen in some of the other quilling instruction where they create a pool of glue and they dip this in the pool. That certainly would be a way. I actually personally think I like to use my needle nose glue bottle and just put a little on the heavy, well, 
I put a little bit everywhere, but I put a little, you know, like the solid center is going to get a pretty good pool of glue on the bottom of it. And then I'm just kind of outlining my flower and trying to kind of catch most of the, most of the pieces caught in some way so they don't come loose and move about. I didn't actually glue the screen on in, so it's trying to move on me. Oh, I'm off camera too. I'm trying to get a little bit of glue on each little curly and things so stuff will stay put. There we go. Darn it. And I dropped it right at the last second there. Oh, look <laughs> what I did. Okay, now we'll change these and put them right. I could definitely use some dazzles around the edge, though. I don't think I'm going to do it right now, though, because I want to move on to another card. But had my fold at the bottom. We're going to cut the paper. I was going to, before I realized I had already glued it down, since I'm using holographic stickers, I was going to put just a little bit of mirror board under there, but I couldn't do it because I had already glued the green square down. When you're making yours, if you decide to do this, that would be a nice touch. I haven't used any mirror board or any of my normal tricks on these cards otherwise, though. Boy, I'm tearing up this stick or something off all between my peeling it off the sheet. And then... Where's my tweezers? Kind of bummed. I think Quilt Creations has stopped making these purple tweezers. I haven't been able to get them for a while, and now they have a more ordinary pair of tweezers that they're selling with their quilling line, which is too bad because I think these purple ones are just the best, but most of you got them, so that's the good news. Don't bother to look for them because we're out of the purples. There we go. Come on. When I flip-flopped that, I lost a little bit of the appeal, I think. So I'm going to put a little... Well, stickers aren't really my my focus here, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the stickers other than fixing my boo-boo there from a minute ago. But I am... I'm going to focus primarily on the quilly. That's looking a little better. I'm not worried about that tiny bit of glue showing there because it's going to dry clear and nobody's going to see that, especially when I get done putting a leaf on the other side with that.
had to have a baby wipe handy during this part of the operation. Now, in case you get glue somewhere, it is going to show. I think we're going to quit right there. Let me back up just a little, honey. Wowzer. I think that's pretty good, guys. I think it's pretty good. The longer I look at it, the more I think it needs a little something here and there. I'd probably pet her with this for another 10 minutes just having fun. But I don't really have to keep going on one. Let's um, let's go ahead and just going to make one more little leaf. I, I'm going to put a leaf up here. <laughs> um, let's go ahead and move on to our next card because, you know, we have a whole stack of them to do. We're not even going to try and do them all today, but we do have, we do have quite a few cards to do. Now, I agree with what Thelma said a little while ago. The extra quilling work kind of takes this from an okay card to, I think, an over-the-top card. It's really quite beautiful. What? Stickles in the center. You got stickles in the center of my flower. Everything's better with stickles. <laughs> no, I think we're not going to put stickles in it. No, that just doesn't look good there. I'm going to stop right there. We're stopping. That's it. It's done. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Let's get another one out of here. I said we were going to do this big one. Let's do that so we don't run out of time. Okay, so on this one, last time I used red, but I think these pinks, oh, I'm missing a petal, I think these pinks would be pretty. Let's see what else we have here. I have one, two of those. I have bright green, these. Let's see what else I have here. It's another bright green. I don't have very many. I'm going to have to make some leaves as we go. Nope, not the right color. Okay. We'll start with those. I do want to know if I have any blooms. Gloss iron. I did that little. I don't think he's the right color. It could probably work though. And nothing says that you absolutely have to use all the same colors. I mean, I could. Throw some of these in here if I wanted to. But I'm going to start with this. I'm going to get myself some green in this limey color. I do like that lime color with what we're doing here. Upper right corner is lifting up on this one. Or on this one. 
not sure what the upper right corner is. This card or the other card, guys? <clears throat> okay. Yeah, let's see what we want to do here. I want some flip too. <laughs> I want to make a couple of I want to make a couple of little um, um, buds to add to this because this will be a kind of spread out design. I think everything's actually holding okay there. Are you talking about these? I don't I don't see it, but okay. Okay, to make my buds, all I'm doing is calling a loose circle. And I can make a bud that's either a marquee or a teardrop. I want about three or four buds, so. I think I've seen your card itself open, and it looks like your top layer Oh, is... it's not. I don't think. No, it's just the card itself, Bowen, guys. It's fine. It's not actually separating. See there? It's glued all the way around, so I'm pretty sure it's solid. Okay. Just the card face bowing just a little bit. Okay. And it's a six by six card. The bigger it is, the more you kind of get that when you glue on them. I find that doing this part, actually decorating, ends up more being about the vines. You know, if you've already pre-made your flowers, then this part tends to be about the vines. So, you know, kind of swirling your vines this way and that, because you really can't make a lot of that in advance. Okay. So I'm going to start out my vine here. And I'm not pulling this real tight. That's actually not really my intention to pull it tight. I really kind of want some subtle curves and things going on here. So I'm going to make another vine. Piece. And this time I'm going to send it the other direction. Let's just make a few of these curlies so we have them and we'll start gluing them together. And 
Let's put it in a leaf in here if we wanted to. These are large leaves. That's okay. Sunflowers have pretty large leaves. We could have large and smaller leaves if we wanted. <clears throat> we could stick with the large ones. Get my board out here. <clears throat> Actually, I might need the petal off that. No, it's not. I thought it might be the petal off my flower, but it wasn't. Okay, I'm going to make a couple more curlies here. And these curlies were just making kind of loose rounds. We're not curling it real tight. We're going to feel free to bend these with our fingers and, you know, open them up more if we want to, close them down more if we want to, just get some little curlies in it. I tend to use fairly short pieces and <clears throat> put those pieces together. I think it's time to glue a little here. So I'm going to glue. I did my bottle one for this. You guys could zap me because I didn't. I didn't put my glue bottle back in my wet wipe. Okay, let's put that together. And let's bring this one down a little. Maybe about here. About like that. I could use just a little more on that end. So trim a little off of that, put a little glue on the end here. You can always stick them back, you know, go back and stick them in other areas too, till you get a look that you really like. <clears throat> okay, to make buds out of these little teardrops, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little piece of my green and just wrap around the bottom. I don't know that we even have to do that, but it just looks to me a little bit more like a bud when we do that. Thank you, Betty, for reminding people to do thumbs up. Uh oh, <laughs> shooting my paper at myself. And remember when I got the 17 cards out of this, that 17 cards was created because I added additional cardstock. You'll have cardstock for, you'll have cardstock for um, 12 cards in your kit. I just wanted to show you that we could make it all up and get some really pretty things out of it. Okay, so we've got a little bud in there now. Let's keep winding these vines down and around. I'm going to put some more, just get some more wound pieces going here. I'm going to finish this card, then I think we'll look at the samples. And if you guys decide you want to do some more of these cards, we can incorporate that after next week when we do our, we're going to come back to quilling. So you guys tell me what you'd like to do the most. Do you want to work on putting the quilled flowers on your cards some more? Or do you want to work on combing techniques? I have some really cool stuff to show you with the comb. So we could work on that, or we can do whatever suits your fancy. There's lots of tools left that we haven't done yet. I have some real surprises to show you as we move forward.
but you guys tell me what you'd like to do. You think you, you guys might like to work some more on building your vines and putting your flowers on your cards, or do you want to move on to new stuff? You tell me, guys. Because I want to do what you find useful. So we're going to finish this card. Then we'll look at some of the other samples that I've done. But if you want to work some more on putting quilled flowers on, I feel like you got a little shorted on that today because it took so much time to build all the card blanks. Not the card blanks, but the... the you know, the card samples we're working with. Anybody got a thought on that? Whether you'd like to work some more on putting the flowers on the cards or whether you want to move on to new stuff. If you guys are comfortable with designing and quilling on your cards, you know, there's no real rule to it. It's just a matter of creating your vines and adding what you'd like to add to your creations, but I won't vote since I buried the bookmarks. <laughs> okay. That's fair. Anybody else have an opinion? More quilling for me. Does that mean more quilling in terms of different quilling, Laura? Or does that mean just keep going with quilling and I don't care what we're doing? <laughs> I can't tell. So give me a little bit more detail. New stuff. Do I interpret that as new stuff? Wait till you see some of the things I have plan for you. I got to get the supplies and they're not easy to find, but I'm working on it. So I'm going to hold that as a surprise when I can find them. Any quilling. Okay. How about any of the rest of you guys? Come on. I need some feedback. You guys have any thoughts? I must have been sitting here for a while. My back's getting sore. <laughs> I'd like to learn more new techniques, but also maybe decorate one or two cards also. The new things with narrower paper. Cool. See, that's the kind of feedback I need. How to read patterns I get from the store. Okay. Good. See, this is what I need. Tell me what else. Betty, that's great. Laura, that's great. Who else has some thoughts here? I started with a wider paper, 
because I think it's a little easier to handle initially, not that the narrow paper is hard, it's not hard at all. In fact, once you, once you can do this, you can absolutely, I bought the baby book, unsure if I need to break paper to that length. Okay, because it's showing you certain measurements. I would say we're probably going to follow those, but bring this down and put a leaf in here. Yes, you teach better than a book. Thelma, you're sweet. Thank you, love. <laughs> Boy, there are some dandy books out there, though, I gotta say. Mostly, I have to admit, I haven't used the, the dialogue in the books. I've just looked at the picture and taken off, you know, based on the shapes. But we can, we can work on that. We absolutely can. Okay, I want to build up and get to another flower over here, so... Gonna kind of turn that a little bit and kind of create a little bit of an angle upward. And let's start running our curls the opposite direction now. Okay. Okay. There are different kinds of templates. This one that you guys got in the kit is um, measuring millimeters. There is another template available. If you're using a Quilt Creations kit, you may find that the addition of one of these very inexpensive little quilling sizers would be useful because it has the numbers identified on here. You got a six, a five, a four, a three, a two. So I believe I have some of these coming too, which are going to make that using the little booklets so much easier if it's a Quilled Creations product because they use these sizes. So that might be all it takes to get you squared around. And I would start with the size they say, and then if you, if you don't like the way it turns out, make it again. Oh, absolutely. Why couldn't you use white paper and color it to match your patterns? Yeah, I think you could, Betty. Why not? That'd be good. You, The one thing I would say is you need to let that paper, it's going to change the texture of your paper a little bit. And so you'll need to compensate for that because your paper will be a little softer after it's been wet. But um, you absolutely could do that. Okay. Yeah, the um, the little quilt creation sizer might be useful. But the other thing I could do is take a moment and give you the board size you have versus the size for quilt creations. We could just hold the measuring tool up and I could tell you what equals what. And that would probably get you going without having to buy another tool. But if you want the... the um, the quilling sizer, it's like three or four dollars. It's nothing. It's very inexpensive. So that would be an option there. If it doesn't look good there. So I'm I'm turning my curls the opposite direction now. Could you use some Jamie powders? Once again, I think we're changing the texture of our paper, but so we'll need to compensate and make sure that our papers are very, very dry. Don't ever um, use papers that are still wet because they won't hold the curl right and they won't hold the glue right. So you have to absolutely make sure that your papers are very, very dry. But 
you can. You absolutely can use papers that have been treated in different ways. You just need to recognize that you're changing the nature of the paper a little bit. I'm going to create a curl upward there. Now, these are all going to have to be glued down, of course, but I'm going to create, I'm going to put in another bud. I think I'll put two buds maybe on this side because I'd like to have an uneven number when it's all said and done. But I'm going to put a bud in here. It only takes a little bit of paper to wrap around these buds. Our quilling videos are getting good views. That's fun for me to see. People are, seem to be liking them and we're getting new viewers, I think. Another little bud in there. And then I need to either take off and go up or take off and go down to kind of just create a little sense of change here. I'm going to come down this way, I think. Maybe yeah. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. I don't like the way that is behaving. Well, let's just do another strip here. Okay, so we are going to move on then. Uh, what I'm hearing you say is you do want to try combing and some of the other tools that are available, and that is cool. I will get those and have them available in time to do our next, our add-on class. We may during the, the store closure, we may just work on quilling and some of those things. I may take a little vacation in there too. While the concrete's drying, we can't do anything with the store, putting everything back until the concrete dries, has two weeks to dry and set completely where they put the floor back. So it's very possible that Bryce and I may take a little, a little vacation and just get out of town for a little bit during that time. And, but in addition to that, I think we can, we can work on some, maybe a magazine box kit or two that doesn't require a lot of supplies from downstairs. And then, um, I know some of you guys were wondering, am I just going to abandon you for a month? 
And the answer is no, I'm not going to abandon you for a month. I am, however, um, a little bit limited in what I can do with classes because of the access to supplies. I have the magazine kits upstairs, so I can do those. And those are always fun. I mean, I think they're fun. I hope they're I hope they're fun for you. They're fun for me. <laughs> and um, then I think it'd be a great time to actually work on quilling and some things that we won't have shipping for. Well, we will have the ability to ship magazines if we do that because I have them upstairs, not downstairs. What for? Most likely we're going to need the packing room to move. Well, what, that has not been the plan. Well, I know, but Brittany and I were looking last night. Well, you guys need to talk with me before you decide those things. Oh. So, because we were planning on being able to ship some stuff from upstairs. That will argue it out and figure Get it out. Your shipping printer upstairs. Well, we might have to do that, but it just would be nice to know that before we're sitting here. Anyway, we'll figure it out. Oh, I like that leaf there. I got to get another bud in somewhere. I do like that leaf down there. Maybe I'll like the bud just as well there. Do I? Um, maybe. That actually looks okay. <coughs> I'd like to get one more leaf in here somewhere, though. It's not a lot of leaves for a lot of vine. Let's see where we can put another leaf in. I'll put the bud right in here. Sometimes I put the leaf next to the bud. Oh, that actually looks kind of good, I think. I don't know. Maybe a little heavy on that side. Okay, I'm going to put this leaf underneath over here. And then I think it's going to be time to glue down. So yeah, I kind of slide the leaves and the buds in the intersection between the two pieces. I think it's time to glue down, guys. I might bring just another little curl right out here. It looks like it could use just a little something right there. But I think we're about done. Yeah, we may, we may do that. We may get out of town for a few days while we can. When you operate a business, it's hard to take time off, and you don't get very many chances where the concrete's curing and you can't do anything. <laughs> so we may just take advantage of that and get a few days. But Okay. But we'll see. I'm kind of thinking a trip out to the ocean is in order. Okay. I think we got it, guys. I'm not going to spend a lot of time gluing this down right now, but I think we've got a nice pattern there. So we are going to let me show you a few more of the finished cards. You've seen them a few times now. I actually was thinking this little heart that's done in the same colors might be really cute as a part of this. I think I want to put that there. What do you think? <laughs> okay what do you guys think you think it's done you like this one we'll glue it down after when i'm off camera but that's what we were just talking about diane is that what we were going to do for classes while the store's closed. And I think we can still fit some things in here or there, whether it's magazine class kits or whether it is um, 
continuing with quilling with the supplies that you have and you know um, adding things as they become available okay let's look at a few more of the patterns that are already finished just to give you a few ideas if you want to keep working on yours so here's our triangle flowers that like we just used and i've just made in this one i put a lot of leaves on it and i want you to notice here come on in and let them see closer up honey On this one, I was emulating one of the flowers. Hmm. Oh, actually, I don't know. I was just making, I made some little loops that um, I used as filler here. Okay. Now you can take your stickers and change, use your intensity markers or your alcohol markers and change colors to add some fun to your cards. Here's this one I did and I love this one. I love the colors with this banner and everything. But this was made just a lot like what we just did. I may, I used marquees for the buds in this one instead of teardrops. Back up just a little, please. A little less, <laughs> right in between those two. There we go. Okay. There we go. So we got that one. We've all done the dragonfly already. And just the dragonfly on some of these is just so striking it's just right it's just right and you'll remember when we do the dragonfly we're just going to use that um they call this weeding <laughs> weeding all we're doing is looping and then looping a slightly a half inch larger strip around that and a half inch larger strip around that a half inch larger strip around that i believe we started with two inch pieces two and a half three three and a half inch pieces. The coils are a full coil, a full strip. Then this one I use three quarters of this. No, this one's a full strip also. This one's three quarters and the last three are halves. So the dragonfly, you guys know how to do this one. And it's just, I mean, it's just perfect on that card, isn't it? I love this one. So the dragonfly is a really nice option. Now you don't have to do a great big floral treatment. Just a little corner <clears throat> can be really nice. You can see I just brought curls out on the two corners. And then I put three leaves in around my flower. And I think this looks really nice. And it doesn't take a lot. Um, this would be a nice quick fix, you know. Um, okay, and here's, I like these. I think these are really fun with these cards. Just the little tight coil flowers. These are so quick and easy to make. And then this is just a stem of leaves that's made from little teardrops. So I took a solid piece and I just started gluing leaves to it, put my flower in where I thought it belonged, and then just kept putting my leaves on. Okay. These are fun and easy and quick. Curly coming up for the stem, curly coming up for the stem, put the flower in the center. I stuck a couple leaves on it, did kind of the same thing at the top just to get a little variation at the top. This one I just made with berries. This one's berries. I made stems and I put berries on them because I thought they kind of matched the, they kind of matched the topper that way. So that's fun. 
then used an extra little chipboard piece in the corner because I thought it could still use something there. This one here I really like. I used different colors. I used white, light pink, and a little bit darker pink. Made my tight coils and then made one of those little, I don't know, flowers that look like they're bushy on the end. <laughs> and once again here, I made my leaves. I emulated something in the pattern. Oh, um, I emulated the, the, the little flower. Come in close, please. See this little flower in the design? I was going for that. And so to get these leaves, these kind of leaves, long and narrow, I just folded my paper <laughs> and left a little loop there. But I think this matches this really fun. This is Bryce's favorite of the cards that I've done. And I wanted to point out one thing on here that I did. This is mostly just vines with a little five petal, six petal flower, tight curls. Here I put a couple of other tight curls in green. And it's a very, very simple design, but how pretty. This one, again, I'm going for the pattern in the flower. See this flower right here? I kind of wanted to go for that pattern. So I created tight coil little flowers, and then I created a couple little partial flowers. Sometimes you see flowers from the side and you don't see the entire blossom. That's kind of what I was going for there. I've got my stem coming up and I filled in with quite a few leaves there. But I love the way this matches this. <laughs> okay. Another little one. This is that friend's card we made just a minute ago. Simple little vines. But how much do they add to that card? That's just so pretty. We get, left ourselves a little room so we could put an extra couple little curlies in here if we wanted to on this one. But I do think it's pretty. And I think... That's a pretty good batch to look at to kind of represent what we've done. We do have a lot of cards to do quilling on. A lot. <laughs> but you got them at the right price, I'll tell you. If you could do 12 cards plus your, um, plus your expenses in your quilled flowers, but 12 cards for $16.95, there you go. <laughs> And there'll be fun cards to give away. And certainly, um, you know, they absolutely have that handmade touch and something special. Okay, let's take a look at what we're doing next week. Next week is, um, can you um, please link this kit if we have any left? This is the Graphic 45 uh, Elegance Kit. Here we go. We have six left of these. I can't believe we have six left. But the Graphic 45 Elegance Kit. We have six left of them at this point. $19.99. You get a 12 by 12. Thank you, honey. It's perfect. 12 by 12 paper pack. That comes with two sheets of stickers, two six by 12 sheets, and you get a, um, a pack of chipboard, yeah, chipboard pieces. I questioned myself there for a second. It's a $27 value at retail. This is now retired. You cannot get it anymore. And, um, this kit is priced at $19.99. It's a use your stash kit. So you're going to use, if you use ribbons, pearls, gems, you're going to use those out of your own stash. 
if you use mirror board, you'll be using that out of your own stash and your card blanks are from your own stash. But the paper and the chipboard is provided in the kit. It's that elegant Paris styled paper. It's just beautiful. Here's the second of our samples. Here's the third of our samples. Most of you, or many, many of you, have, know how to make these roses from our classic rose making. If you don't know how, we do have those kits. I like this one. This one says, charm, power, quality, or giving delight. But I just like the way the rose matches this one. Once again, from the classic roses, I just made a very open rose there. And this is just a softly created rose. It's not a real big one, and it doesn't stand real tall. But all of these are handmade roses from the classic rose at Heartfelt Creations when we did those. So the um, Elegance Kit, $19.99 plus your own supplies. And it's absolutely gorgeous. Gorgeous. So that's coming up next week. The following week, I think we will go back to quilling. Um, I have some fun things coming up for Thursdays. I don't have any samples to show you yet, but I can tell you that um, I have... Oh, this one's coming up this Thursday. I do want to tell you about this, and it is out there in the store. This Thursday, we have these really cute shutter cards, masculine shutter cards, and that's what we're going to make Thursday night. Masculine shutter cards. Fun designs. They're suitable for Father's Day, but don't have to be Father's Day. Uh, the kit is out there. It makes 12 cards. The kit is in our live stream area, and it is $16 for 12 cards. I stuck it there. Huh. Try typing in shutter, please. And for him. Oh, there it is right there. Got, click on concertina shutter cards. It's right there first, very first one. There we go. So Bryce is linking that for you. It's $16 and it makes 12 cards, 12 masculine cards. And these are fun designs, guys, really fun. So there you go. That's coming up Thursday. Then the following Thursday, we're going to make cards using that, those pearlescent card layers. I'll have kits made up and I'll hold these upstairs. I think we're still going to have time though from there. We're still early. And then we have another magazine kit coming up on the following Thursday. So we have lots of good things on the agenda for you. Do you guys have any questions, comments, or pearls of wisdom for the group? Questions, comments, or pearls of wisdom, anybody?
your fingers get sore? No. Um, not at all, actually. Um, my fingers got more sore from um, putting pressure on the glue bottle when I was putting the cards together than it did from, than it does from quilling. I don't find that my fingers get sore at all. I suppose if I had, you know, a significant amount of arthritis or something in my fingers, my fingers might get sore and I might have to rest a bit. But this is, you're not applying pressure because you're not applying pressure. Um, it's actually, you know, more um, stress relieving than inducing. It doesn't, it doesn't um, really make my fingers sore at all. Um, if you find, because maybe you do have a little arthritis or something in your finger, I actually have a quilling tool coming that has a fatter handle and it has um, flat areas on each side. So it's supposed to be more ergonomic. So if, if it does bother you, and it does, like I said, it doesn't bother me at all. And I actually do have a little pain in my fingers sometimes, but I'm not finding any pain from quilling. But if you find that it bothers you at all, consider trying the ergonomic tool. That'll be in next week. So I don't think you'll find any pain at all, though. In fact, um, this is a very Zen activity. It's quite fun to just watch TV and make some, you know, just choose a kind that you're making. Maybe I'm making pink teardrops for the next hour and then just cut your pieces and then just sit there and, you know, make your teardrops for an hour and then switch and make marquees that are yellow, you know, <laughs> but just, um, and then just drop them all in a little supplies box so that when you go to assemble your flowers, you have materials to work with. Okay. All right. In the absence of any further questions, comments, or pearls of wisdom, uh, the quilling kits are all gone. Really? We sold them all, huh? Wow. Um, I could see about getting more, but um, for right now, unless somebody tells me they specifically want it, I don't need anything that's not selling in the store. But if you wanted one and you didn't get one, I can look towards making some more up. Oh, I, yeah, we do. The quilling, uh, actually, the quilling kit sold out, but I had some that weren't listed yet. We had to reassemble the rest of the supplies. There's three of them in stock, so let's copy that. Thank you, Brace. We have three more kits in stock right now. The boss tool that we have is great. What Thelma's talking about is an electronic winder tool. You push the button and it winds up your paper. <laughs> There's three. Um, we just put a link there. Try it again, Kathy, girly girl. Are they gone? No, they're not gone. There's the link right there. That's how fast it winds up your paper with the with the winder tool. Oh, you want to see that again? It's amazing. Did you find them, Kathy? There's a link on your screen now, huh? And see the boss again. This is this is not the same, exactly the same as the one you would get. Because Margie got me this for my birthday a couple years ago. But um, the one that we have in the store works fundamentally the same. <laughs> it's fast. It's fast. <laughs> You can roll a whole strip of paper in just a second. Okay. All right. All right. I'm going to sign off for now. We will see you guys on Wednesday. And um, in the meantime, have a great weekend. Stay safe. And we'll see you Wednesday. Bye, guys.